Hey everybody, welcome back to When Harry Met Board Games. I am Harry. I am Lily. And today we'll be continuing Lily's top 25 games of all time. Counting down her number 10. That's it, we're in her top 10 games of all time. The cream of the crop, the creme de la creme. Numbers 10 through 6. But before we go any further, please make sure to hit the like button down below and subscribe to the channel if you're interested in some more board game related content. So without any further ado, which you've been waiting for, I, I would like to apologize uh, due to scheduling and Lily be, being a little under the weather. We weren't able to post um, this video yesterday, but we're posting it today. So sorry about that. Thank you for your patience. Hopefully that helped to build up the suspense a little <laughs> bit. So let's get cracking, Lily, with your number 10. Well, for all of those out there who have been putting up with my number... 11 to 25 mm -hmm. in the expectation that my 10 top oh, games oh. are amazing <laughs> i shall not disappoint okay all Listen right <laughs> all right that's all that matters number 10 right yep. number 10 all right number 10 <laughs> it comes in a box and it is color blue and it is carcassonne all right carcassonne carcassonne mm -hmm. what is carcassonne for all of those that don't know it you have been missing out on life <laughs> let me tell you this is my go-to zen game it is essentially a puzzle there i said it that's really it with a couple of rules here and there but it is just a puzzle so if you like <laughs> playing puzzles or um forming puzzles or if you are spatially gifted and or if you're not it doesn't really matter. You'll have a great time. It is guaranteed 100%. The amazing thing about Carcassonne is that it comes with a million different expansions. Uh, how many expansions? Oh, there's like nine expansions to the base game plus tons. I think maybe even like a dozen spin-off standalone games, which yeah, we played a lot of those too. Yeah, we played and if you check out our Instagram, it's also there. <laughs> but I mean, honestly, like with the base game, you can play anything. So, I really love Carcassonne. So, what are you doing in Carcassonne? What am I doing in Carcassonne? I'm, I'm going to explain it a little bit. I'm that psyched about it. <laughs> oh, look. And Harry actually went out of his way and organized it all. Yes, I did. I did. We have lots of content for it. This is not even all of the content for the base game. I have some of it also in one of the other expansion boxes. It's a hobby within a hobby. Don't yeah. get the wrong idea. Our home does not look this neat. <laughs> just, just, just my game room. <laughs> just my game room. But, Carcassonne, you are placing tiles. Some tiles have roads. Some tiles have uh, cities. Right? Some tiles have like monasteries, intersections. Mm -hmm, you accrue mm -hmm. points based on the amount of cities that you complete. The roads. There's a monastery. I, I, I just oh, drew it out even looking yeah, at it. The monasteries are the ones that give you nine points if they have adjacent tiles. If you them. surround them, yeah, with tiles. So, I mean, it's just a really, really amazing game. Some of the expansions have like rivers that go around it. And uh, some of them have like fish or volcanoes that mm -hmm, go mm -hmm. and add different points if you collect a system of fish. Yeah, yeah. Volcanoes. I mean, there's like a gold mine in one of them. You'll never get bored of Carcassonne. Carcassonne is just what you want to do when you don't know what to do. <laughs> it could be my number one game, but there's only one number one and everything gets pushed up. And I so, guess one of each of numbers two through nine as well. Always keep in mind, always keep in mind, after my 10th game, all my games are like top one. It's just a matter of which one am I feeling more at the moment. But yeah, so you mean I you, love To clarify, all. you mean numbers 11 through 25 are like mm -hmm. interchangeable. That's what you mean. No, number one to, to nine to ten. One through ten are interchangeable? A really? lot of them are. I didn't know this that. Used to ah. be, this used to be one of my first games. A couple sure, of years I ago. mean games are gonna move and shift, but the point is, well, right I now learned. the way you feel won't be drastically different than tomorrow. It's just that it no. might be drastically different than a month from now, but not than tomorrow. It's just that there's so many great games out there, and there's <laughs> so little space in my top ten. Okay, ten slots. So unfortunately, mm. things will get pushed up. Yes. But that's not to say that because it's my 10th game, it's been an amazing game. It's a great game. It's one it's of my favorite game. as well. As a matter of fact, well, I'm not going to spoil it for those who haven't watched my list, but it ranks definitely in my top 50. Yes, and that's for another expansion. We haven't played with that one just but yet. But essentially, once you make Carcassonne, it kind of looks like this, but in the different tile pieces. Hmm. But 
it always has a, it always has a different layout because yeah. essentially no two games are the same. Carcassonne is a gateway style game. You could teach it to anybody. Very easy to learn. But with some of the expansions, some of the content the expansions add, it, it it gives a little bit of depth and, and a slight smidge of complexity for those who like a little bit more meat on their games. And that is Carcassonne number ten. All right, let's. And it is done by a German who we saw like a. A documentary of at some point? No, that's not Klaus Teuber. This is Klaus Jurgen oh. Reed or Reddy. A different Klaus. Reddy. I think the W is pronounced as a V. Either way, <laughs> an amazing Klaus. Yes. Not yes. Santa Claus. No. <laughs> Not all right, now we go on to our number or Lily's number nine game of all time. What's that, Lily? Oh, are the lights flickering? No, they're not. Because we have Power Grid. <laughs> yeah okay okay the big guns this is a big gun uh pretty heavy yeah well we have a few expansions in here as well a boring green color with a 1950 caricature don't <laughs> let it fool you because it's an amazing game don't judge a book by its cover do not it is the it is the um upgraded sister of ticket to ride I mean, it like has... if Ticket to Ride had a had a kid with like, who else? Um, Agricola. Maybe I don't know. Bit. It has, it and has the else? it has the route building of Agricola. You are building routes or or network connecting networks of power plants or cities where you will establish your power plants. But it has a lot of neat mechanisms combined with it. Yeah, it has a bunch of mechanisms, and it has for those of you who are feeling patriotic. The map of the what is this map of? Yeah. Well, map? we have North America. North America on one side, or oh, or most of the United States, I think. Yeah, it's just the United States. Oh uh, yeah, I don't see no Canadian yeah. towns there. And then on the other side, we have Germany. Of course, it has to be a German woman. Yes, game. Freedom and Freeze, uh, yeah, German guys, game we're designer. behind. We need to come up with amazing games. Like yeah. This. Anyway, there's some good American designers out there. They are. <laughs> I just, they're not on my top 10, evidently. They're not. Maybe I haven't played their games yet. Well, uh, uh, your American designs aren't necessarily your cup of tea. That too. L know, Lily's definitely more a refined gamer. She likes the European or I Euro do. style games. I which do. the German designers are have a huge uh, monopoly on that. I guess if by American, you mean like Wild, Wild West? No, not Wild West. Just Roll, like Amer dice yeah, it's usually cards. dice rolling, attacking, very conflict oriented type of games for the most part. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes very rich thematically, but a little bit lacking a bit mechanically. And Lily definitely is a mechanical gamer. You like the mechanisms. I am in a games. mechanical and methodical, and I like to get rich and or accrue points and or accrue cities. And or grow my influence or whatever it is yes. that gets me to have more. Mm -hmm. And that is what this game gets you to do. Essentially, it follows the ticket to ride type of mechanism where you're connecting one city to the next. You're also paying for the amount that it says there to connect it. It has different rules. Um, you cannot build more than... So one only one player will build in each city for the first round of the first while of the game. Yeah, the first phase. There's phase a of the game. Yeah, like they call them steps, but you could call them and phases. And after a while, when everybody gets to certain points, then you can have two different players share a city. And, and then, then eventually a third do, if it's a multiplayer game. Amazing. What you're trying to do is you, you have to manage your resources to build the routes, to buy the fuel. Well, to build the routes, to build the power plants. To figure out what the power plants are going to be fueled what with. What resources fuel them. To yes. buy those resources. Yes. And to, at some point, whenever the end of the game is triggered, which anybody can trigger once they get to a certain amount, different ways to trigger the, the end of the game, manage to uh, power the maximum amount of plants. So, did General Electric sponsor this? Did STEM sponsor this? Who knows? <laughs> But it's an amazing game. Definitely one that I will be teaching my kids. A yeah. lot of critical thinking involved. A lot of planning ahead. A lot of appropriation of funds. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Well, love for, it. For those who haven't watched my, my top 50 games of all time. Have, have you watched my top 50 games of all time? For those I who will. haven't watched my top 50 <laughs> games of all time. This was 
somewhere in the top 50. I won't spoil where for those who haven't watched I yet. I commute from work and back. Sure, excuses. Okay. You're supposed to love me. Bronx, New York to so, New Jersey. This is a That's great a game. And commute. as I mentioned in my, top, to in my top 50 installation where this ended up winding up, is that this game combines a lot of neat and deep, intricate mechanisms. So you have a, a, an auction for turn oh, order. Oh, yeah. There's an auction at the end. Like, look, you have to, like, figure out if you're going to somehow power stop with trash versus, uh, versus what is this, uh, coil, coal versus... Yeah, you have the different resources uh, in the market. Nuclear waste. I mean, it, I mean, it is a very upcycling type game because evidently you can repurpose anything. And yeah, it's your, uranium, I believe. Uranium. But yeah, so you have <laughs> you have an up. auction you have an auction before each round to determine turn order. So you don't even have the same turn order necessarily. Um, well, first of all, turn order actually is based on two different things: who's who has the most cities and who has the least cities, depending on what um, phase of the round you're interacting with. But one of the things you're doing is you're not auctioning for turn order. I'm sorry, you're auctioning for the different power plants that you're trying to purchase. And then you're buying resources to supply those those same power plants. And the resource has a very interesting market where um, it's a supply and demand market. The more there are of that resource, the cheaper they cost. The less there are, the, the, the more expensive they cost. And you're buying these resources, but you could only hold a certain amount. You cannot hoard these resources because your power plants that you're buying only have so much storage space. And what's interesting about this game is that... It's kind of like a boxing fight. It's really about getting that knockout punch because so often it's been my experience that people think that they're winning the game because they're making a lot people, of money. He means me. No, not, not only you. Almost everybody I've played with has fallen into that trap of Mostly. feeling comfortable because they're making lots of money when they don't realize that the point of the game is once you enter phase four, which is once um, 21, depending on how many players, once the certain threshold of cities has been built... Whoever on that turn, on that round, can supply the most cities with power has won the game. So it doesn't matter who has the most cities. It doesn't matter who has the most power plants. It's like a combination of the two. You have to be able to have X amount of cities and X amount of power plants to supply power to X amount of cities. And if you marry those two perfectly, then you will be the winner. And again, what, one of the things that I appreciate about this game is it combines all these mechanisms and it feels so smooth. It doesn't, it doesn't feel burdensome. It doesn't feel like, oh, couldn't they have done without this? Sometimes people try to throw too oh, much into it. a game. But I feel like these combined mechanisms just work very neatly tightly together it's a no, great it's, it's final so well put together and i just realized apparently there's like a china korea version that we never opened no we haven't we've played this game a handful of times we've got and australia like, and australia indian subcontinent and russia and japan. japan yes yes and there's a ton of other maps out there really? we also have the robot expansion which is great especially for a two-player game because this will simulate a third, a third player so that's going to be really really neat power grid I don't know how much it is. I don't know where you, you can get it. Probably not at Barnes and Am Noble. Amazon. You could absolutely get it on but... Amazon. This game is constantly in print. It's an evergreen. Literally, the color is green. It's green. <laughs> but um, but also this game has oh. been in in print for about twenty years now. I think if the original German production has been in print for over twenty years, it's a successful game. It's not going anywhere. If it sounds like your cup of tea, definitely give it a try. So let's move on to number... Trust Rio Grande. Yes, number... This was number nine, Power Grid. Let's move on Sorry. to number eight. The number nine was a lot. <laughs> and I really liked it. Ooh, it is a two-hour game. I felt the though. earth shake right there. Yeah, I mean, it did shake. It is, it is a long game, especially with higher it player counts. But it's you don't you don't feel it. There's it's games that feel long while you're playing them. You don't feel it. Number eight. In the year... Of the dragon. All right. All right. So let me introduce myself again. I am currently learning Mandarin, and I love everything uh, Mandarin, Korean, not Korean, Chinese, and or from Hong Kong. So when Harry brought this to my attention, that apparently there was a game that simulated like bad luck, <laughs> and essentially you have to prepare 
for bad things that will take place. Well, it's the year of the dragon. And, the year of the dragon is like a bad year. The and game consists of 12 rounds representing each of the 12 months of the year of the dragon. And yeah, lots of calamities lots are taking place. You know, it's much like life. I'm trying to see because you probably won't be able to. This is what the game actually looks like. So all the players have different tokens and are trying to build... Uh, not cities? Is that what you're talking about? A city? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Trying to build city where their houses. Well, yeah, are you're you're building your your little palaces. But multi four palaces. Furthermore, from the beginning of the game, uh, as yeah, from the beginning of the game, you're shuffling the cards to see what what kind of calamities will take place when, and depending on what's happening, you have to make adjustments. You have to prepare. You have to stock up food or medicine or whatever it is that's happening. Or and or you know you may need to fight the Mongols mm -hmm. as they get the invade every so often. I don't know. So the point of the matter is that you can plan ahead, and I am a planner. I love planning. And how did I win at this a lot of times? Uh, yes, Will. You've got a decent record here. I think you've won a little bit more than what I've won. Yes, sure. For it's those so who that. are curious about our our stats, it's so always that it's an amazing game. I can plan ahead, I can prepare for Calamity, and it doesn't bother me that it's called the Year of the Dragon, because bring it on. If I know three year or three months from now that, I, that it's going to be a hunger, then I could stock up on food and make it happen. So um, I really like it. I really like to prove to myself that I can survive the Year of the Dragon. Yeah. It has some really cool pieces, some really little cool coins. Like what is it yes. Again? Um, yuan, yuan, I believe, yuan, is the medieval, medieval Chinese, Chinese currency. currency. Different Chinese looking characters mm -hmm. that were monks and different people like that. Yeah, builders Scribes, and, and builders and accountants people, and farmers. Farmers that want like people who set up fireworks. Like they'll all let you. They'll all let you uh, have different type of. Um, what's called turns yeah they'll help you prepare for for different calamities right each of the workers that you're trying to recruit over the course of the game help you with the different calamities mm -hmm. however you will never be able to do enough in this game to prevent all the calamities some of those are going to hit you and they're going to hit you hard mm -hmm. and it's just about picking and choosing the right time and the right the right casualty to suffer right you will suffer those casualties but whoever Suffers the least, basically, is the person who ends up winning the game. Me, in other words. <laughs> in the year of the, dra of the dragon, give it a try. I don't know how new this is. This is not new at all. As a matter of fact, this is a 10th anniversary edition, and oh, even yeah. this is a few years when old. This came out from two in 2007. It's from Stefan Feld. Anybody who's ever played any Stefan Feld games? I'm a fan. He's Stephen got he's got some Stephen. pretty good designs, and this is a this is a good one. I, I I it also made it to my top fifty, not nearly as high as the top ten as as for Lily. That's because he's not learning Mandarin. Uh, but it's a it's a good game. It's a classic, and uh, and this tenth anniversary edition actually comes with a few expansions included. So. Which I don't think we played yet. Again, we've played this game a handful of times, but you know, Lily wants to learn the game and play the expansion at the same time. So, as you've noticed, a lot of my a lot of my top ten or my top uh, was it ten to ten to six. six are new games that we've played only a handful of times. That I'm in love. Oh yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah. Except good, for good impressions. That's oh no, Carcassonne's a classic. We've That's been playing that for years. Number. Number seven. That was number eight. That was number eight. Number and seven. Now, number seven. Oh. oh my gosh. Okay. I'm hurting because I can't believe I, I made this number seven when I love it. Oh, I guess mm. because it's a small version. Yeah. You must be wondering what it is. It is Agricola. All creatures, big and small. Yes. So, Agricola. It is a version of Agricola. And Agricola is a game. It's a worker placement game that you may or may not see as we continue to do our top in a bit. Okay. I will pretend I did not hear that. <laughs> but we had an issue with Agricola. Agricola is like a three player or more. No, Agricola could play two players. Could play, but, but it's two or more. This is actually Agricola's one or more. You could play solo. This is two player only. Two player only. And it cuts it down time wise. Agricola, I would say, is about an hour, maybe an hour and a little bit of change. 
with two people, with more people. It's about half an hour per player. This game is half an hour total, but it cuts out a lot of the things from Agricola, right? It cuts it does, out, but it gives you horses. That's, to make up That's for it. true. Base game Agricola doesn't have horses. There is an expansion that adds horses, but... You know, I always wanted to raise my own horse, and a wooden one wouldn't be a bad idea, I suppose. So, what do I love about Agricola? The texture, the board. You're going around, uh, spending... You're, you're putting... You're, you're placing your workers. I guess in this particular one, you start and you finish with the same amount of workers. Yes, three. just three. You just have three. Before, in the regular Agricola, you would have children have yeah to feed you them. start with a family of two and you could potentially grow them to a family of five but you it, don't need really... is it possible that we'll hear about this later on it's possible we'll rehash so here, this i like this one you don't have to feed the family so that is yes one less stress one less stress in life yeah. you don't have to provide food on the table for your growing hungry family mm -hmm. and um you have set amount of terms. I guess it was the other one as well, but this yeah, one, the that was the fourteen rounds. Here you only have eight. You have eight, and then the eight rounds are signif are symbolized by the little um, fences fences that you are building. It's where you will corral your animals. I love it. I just love it. You get points by the amount of animals that you have, by the amount of expansions. It comes with little expansions that you can. Yeah, Use farm to, expansions. Farm yeah. expansions. To extend the space of your and farm. And these, these, these farm expansions. Because you get a base farm. You get, like you get a base Yeah, farm. you got a, Your so player you get, board is a, is your little farm. It's, you get it's a base small. One, and you don't build your home. You don't really right? upgrade it. You only have six spots. Right? You don't really upgrade it to like the wooden clay or whatever version no but there are buildings you and some of the build buildings, buildings are upgrades to your house and they're like tiles that you put next to them not necessarily upgrades that you put on top but anyway um the expansions that add to it and then these expansions are actually um if you complete them they give you extra points in and of itself so there's a lot of multiple ways of um scoring yes agricola all creatures big and small yeah and we have the big box I'm not sure this is still in print. This game was actually out of print for many, many years. Really? And then just recently, maybe about two years ago, came back into print with this Big Box Edition, which is called Big Box because it includes the two little expansions. So Agricola, All Creatures Big and Small, comes with a few buildings, but with the two expansions, it adds up a lot of buildings. So there is a lot of variety for this there game. There is. We haven't even played all of their... Oh, no, we have not. So we got horses, as we said... You could uh you could go into you know the cows yeah right the uh the pigs and the sheep and the sheep yep so we have them all corralled in a nice little storage compartment that Harry has spent much time <laughs> investing and or organizing and uh, you have different type of um, resources as well mm -hmm. you got wood which is the main resource that everybody's looking for mm -hmm. and you got um what's this coil? Coal? stone 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 and you got reed yeah those are the three resources in this and you can build different things like an x amount of wood lets you build um, yeah you know fences you build fences you build upgrade, some of the different buildings, buildings yeah that. anyway really great game Really, really great game. Can't believe it's my number seven. Number seven, yeah. I mean, that's pretty high. I mean, you know, granted, I, just I think... I couldn't fit you. It's just there's just not enough space. I think the last time you did your top, you know, we usually do the top hundred. We don't share the full hundred, but the last time you did your top hundred, I think, I think this made it into your top five. So it just fell down a few spots. But again, we've played a I lot cried. of new games since then. and, and We have. And some old ones, for whatever reason, have surpassed it. So I'm a little protective, you know, because I don't want to like play too many, because then like I don't want to fall, fall, fall out of love. Feel, Lily feels like she's being, you know, I'm disloyal I'm to her my... games when she learns a new one. <laughs> but number six, the last one for today's six. list. Woo! What do we have here? Sushi Go. Whoop, whoop. The party okay. edition. <laughs> but. I, this was this was my gateway game, one of the way, gateway games, very similar. I mentioned Sushi Roll uh, a few games ago. I don't know which one it was, 
It wasn't in my top list. Yeah, no, it was like number 11, I think. This is the card version of Sushi Go. The original, Sushi the, the original, bigger brother. The bigger brother, because Sushi, Sushi Go is not a, it's a party game, but this could really play well with a lot. And it has a lot more options of different types of meals. Don't let it be fooled by the caricatures. They're kind of funny. So it gives you a ton of different cards, more than the regular Sushi Go game. Um, this kind of got still, a little messy here. You can still build your tempuras and score five points. You can now build your edamame. Okay, you could build your temakis. It is a great opportunity to um, practice Japanese and or not make a fool of yourself when you go to your hibachi place next time. Ooh, ramaki. Never know what that is, but we will find out. <laughs> and the yeah. green tea. The, um, in addition to the pudding, which adds up at the end. Of the so game. essentially, we were introduced to this game as Sushi Go, which is a smaller uh, product, Ooh, the eel. a smaller package, and it was nice. I used it more as a a gateway or teaching uh, bridge into Seven Wonders for people that I would later on introduce to Seven Wonders. And Lily fell in love with Sushi Go. I found it a little simplistic, but. Uh, sometime last year, we bought Sushi Go Party. And I'll admit that Sushi Go Party has helped me appreciate Sushi Go more. Because for me, one of my big things, the way Lily values Zen in her game, in her gaming experience, I value variety. And Sushi Go was lacking variety. However, Sushi Go Party has introduced lots of new cards to the game lots of new uh, menu items to the game which again lots adds variety. the variety because they're not all in each game so you kind of pick and choose which cards are going to be in which game and you need to have a certain amount of each type of cards right there's like arch types to each of these cards but as long as you meet those requirements you'll have a balanced game but every game is going to play different because you're always going to have these different sets of cards that do different things and that it's still not in my top 50 I don't think it's close to my top 50. You put your menu here. But it's definitely been bumped up a few spots for me because of the variety. How about how about for you? Did Sushi Go Party make a big dent in your gaming experience? Or do you feel like it was just like, oh, okay, that's cool. I'm, I'm curious. Absolutely, because I don't have anybody to play other than you. So if you refuse to play it with me, it's going to make a huge dent. Okay, okay. So because Harry now so can play it more, I love it more because he's not going to play the other one. <laughs> So other than that, you don't feel like the additional cards made any Absolutely. tangible difference? I, mean, I don't like the EO card, but that's just me. No, of course. I mean, with variety, there's always going to be things that you like and dislike. Yeah. Things you could live without. But the point is, did the concept of more content help it? Or do you feel like either no, way it, either way, it would have still made it to number six? That's that's what I'm asking. Would it have it made it this high? It probably would have high? made it to number six. Okay. No. It probably would have made it. I would have, if it hadn't come up with more content, I would have said Sushi Go, Sushi Roll. So Sushi uh, Go Roll would have been higher. Sushi Roll, yeah. Yeah. But, because I mean, we don't even, do we even own the other one anymore? No, I, I, I sold yeah. it to a friend and we for five really... bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Wayne. Thanks, Wayne. <laughs> um, yeah, so we haven't really missed it either. No, of course. I mean, it's the same. Everything that's in Sushi Go, by the way, is in Sushi Go Party. It just has additional things in it it's as well. A, it's, the, it's not the average version. The other one was the average version. Like you said, you used it to get us into Seven Wonders. Yes, so this exactly. Could, this could be a standalone game. It could. It's still very light, but the variety... Yes. And, 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 and the, some of the cards allow you to create um, a deeper, heavier, still relatively light, but a heavier game. As a matter of fact, the rule book gives you some like tips as to which cards you can mix and match for which type of game you want to have. If you want to have a lighter game than even regular Sushi Go, it gives you some recommendations which cards to combine. If you want to have a little bit of a heavier game, it gives you, if you want to have a mean game, if you want to have a friendly, non-confrontational game, it gives you all of these different options and possible setup recommendations. We only have mean games in this household, and I win. We don't need any help. <laughs> Sushi Go Party! Try it, <laughs> and then go to a go to a Japanese restaurant and practice it. <laughs> yes, and eat it. <laughs> so there we go. Top ten to six games of all time for that. Lily, and, and I will just under thirty minutes. And just under thirty minutes, and I will. Oh, we better wrap it up quickly. And I will say I was very impressed. I was just telling Lily before this video. This is her 
installation of five games that I'm most impressed with. Really, really good games. Some of these games are very, very highly ranked on my list as well. And if you're ever wondering how, what kind of software we use to rank our games, we use, what is it? Uh, it's, the, it's the ranking engine in pubmeeple.com. Pubmeeple. Very helpful because it does all the comparisons for you. Yeah, yeah, all you have to do is click, 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 click. Yeah, exactly. And, then, and, it, and it gives you, you con, you're confronted with a tough decision. You're this right. game versus this game. And you have to make the choice. And sometimes you're like, oh, what must, must I really pick? Right? It's, but it's a, it's, a good, it's a good program. So, it will challenge what you thought you held yeah. there. So we do hope to continue yeah. and finally wrap up Lily's top, te- top 25 games of all time with her top 5 through 1 next Tuesday. Please stay tuned for that. Again, don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button down below. Um, Thank you so much for taking out some of your precious time just to watch us discuss board games, especially Lily and her top 25 games of all time. thank you. Thank you. And from When Harry Met Board Games, I'm Harry signing off. And I am Lily because he also met Lily. Yes, yes, I did. (laughs) Take care. (laughs) Bye-bye.